The 2020 SEC football season gave us a national champion in the Alabama Crimson Tide, who possibly could contend for one of the greatest teams ever, along with a great SEC championship matchup between both high offensively powered teams of Alabama and Florida. Today we are going to be discussing the East Division of the SEC, including schedule predictions, a thing or two I like and don't like about the team, and my ceilings and floors for all teams in the SEC East Division. So let's get started off, get right into the predictions here. And in seventh place in the SEC East, I have the Vanderbilt Commodores. Vanderbilt has first-year head coach Clark Lee now under the helm, and there is not much to be proud of here. Quarterback Ken Seals is back after a decent freshman season, and they return four um, receivers who caught at minimum 25 passes in 2020. However, the rest of the team is something to be concerned about, especially seeing how Derek Mason left the cupboard pretty bare. Vanderbilt gets off to an easy start against ETSU in Week 1 before going on a three-game losing streak, in my opinion, to Colorado State, Stanford, and Georgia. They'll beat UConn as they're a lower, um, lower tier near FCS Division I school. However, after their win against UConn and standing at 2-3, and three, they will go on a seven-game losing streak to Florida, South Carolina, Mississippi State, Missouri, Kentucky, Ole Miss, and Tennessee. And this is because, in my opinion, all of those seven schools have superior coaches and superior talent and will likely have, whether it wants to be admitted or not, superior schemes. And I mentioned whether it wants to be or not because many are not a fan of Mike Leach's air raid at Mississippi State at the moment after they went 4-7. and seven. We'll get to that in another episode. Vanderbilt will, again, be in 7th place, and I think their floor is 1-11. I think with having UConn and ETSU, which in all practicality are two FCS teams, I can't see how Clark Lee and Vanderbilt could go winless, but it is possible, but I think very unlikely. And then I think that at most, Vanderbilt could hope for would be a 5-win season. 6-6 six and six would awfully be pushing it with what they have returning and with the fact that they have Ole Miss and Mississippi State as their SEC West opponents. So Vanderbilt's going to finish 7th in the SEC East. It'll take some rebuilding to get that program back to anywhere near bowling. But next up, we have South Carolina. Now, South Carolina also has a first-year head coach in Shane Beamer, and I think this is a great hire, son of legendary head coach at Virginia Tech, Frank Beamer. Shane Beamer was the um, assistant head coach and tight ends coach at Oklahoma before being hired to South Carolina. South Carolina gets started off in the season with games facing Eastern Illinois, then traveling to East Carolina. I think they'll open up 2-0 and in those games, just having superior talent and a superior head coach. But they will drop two eggs against Georgia and Kentucky, as Georgia has superior talent, coaching, and I believe also has like far more starters returning as well. Georgia should not lose that game by any means. Then you will lose again to Kentucky, and I think this is just because Mark Stoops always has great defenses, and Kentucky, despite lacking a lot in talent, has always been solid under Stoops. And I just think here, especially with the place South Carolina is at after Will Muschamp left, Kentucky has every right to win this game. South Carolina will then get back to a win against Troy before dropping one against Tennessee and then beating Vanderbilt, but they will sadly miss out on bowling because they will go on a five-game losing streak to Texas A&M, Florida, Missouri, Auburn, and Clemson. Their closest game in that stretch, I believe, will be Auburn, not only because it's a home game, but because I think Missouri, Florida, A&M, and Clemson are all going to be far better teams than Auburn 
will be. It's mainly because I just don't like how the new head coaching hire at Auburn. South Carolina will finish 4-8. and eight. They will have one in-conference win against Vanderbilt, and they will play sixth in their division. Now, one thing I like about South Carolina is just their head is their head coach in Shane Beamer. That is the main thing I like in South Carolina, along with a great running back duo in Kevin Harris and Marshawn Lloyd. However, what I do not like is just really just the fact that Will Muschamp has commanded a good amount of those offensive starters and offensive players for a while. And that just screams disaster when it comes to anything offensive. You do not want Will Muschamp commanding an offense. And that right there, just it won't get them far. It'll take a while to rebuild this team into having a competent offense, in my opinion. South Carolina's floor is 2-10. and 10. I It could completely fall into the gutter here, and they could maybe lose to Vanderbilt or East Carolina. But I think Eastern Illinois and Troy are next to guaranteed wins. But South Carolina could also surprise a lot of people and end up going 7-5, and I think. I think that Kentucky, Tennessee, and Auburn are games that can be winnable with South Carolina's coaching and talent. But that, then again, that is just my opinion. The next team that we have coming up is a team with another first-year head coach in Josh Heupel. Enter the Tennessee Volunteers. Tennessee is under is about to really be hit with a good amount of sanctions, in my opinion, from recruiting violations. However, I don't think that they will completely fall out and completely drop to the worst SEC team. I don't think that's possible with their head coach, with their talent, and especially their talent all across the board, not just in one place, like a team maybe like South Carolina, but pretty balanced. They have some good, talented quarterbacks, and you got some transfers going to Tennessee as well in the quarterback position, which is the thing I actually like about Tennessee. They're wide variety and Josh Heupel's offense, wide variety quarterback specifically. But Tennessee opens up with a game against Bowling Green. They will then face off against Pitt and Tennessee Tech. I think all of those games are wins for the Volunteers. However, I do think that they will lose to Florida and Missouri before redeeming themselves by beating South Carolina. And from here, the road gets rough, but it could also get great depending on how Tennessee goes. You have a game hosting Ole Miss, then travel to Alabama and Kentucky, and then host Georgia. I think all those four games will be losses, but then I think they will win out their remaining two games against South Alabama and Vanderbilt to finish 6-6, six and 2-6 six, and six in the SEC. They will finish 5th in the SEC East Division, and while I do think this team couldn't get much worse, it's always a possibility, and those... That possibility is 4-8, and eight, with likely losses to South Carolina and Pitt. However, they could also gain two more wins, in my opinion. I don't think they could beat more than two out of the Ole Miss, Kentucky, and Missouri games. I think Alabama, Georgia, and Florida are near guaranteed losses. But I think out of Kentucky, Ole Miss, and Missouri, I think that Tennessee at most could surprise two of those teams and finish 8-4. and four. And let me tell you, if Tennessee finishes 8-4, and four, Josh Heupel should be nominated for Coach of the Year Award, seeing what this team is about to go through. Again, the thing I like about Tennessee is their wide variety at quarterback. I think you have three or four possible starters at quarterback who all have will all have talent if developed properly, even Joe Milton, as and I mentioned that because I'm a Michigan fan. And also, Josh Heupel has constantly led, consistently led, top 10 scoring offenses. So look out for Tennessee's offense next year. The one thing I don't like about them is just that the sanctions will ruin some talent that they have. And Heupel, last year at UCF, did not have a good defense. So they have to have a good defense to be able to achieve their ceiling. That's a must for Tennessee. So that's a concern. 
Next up, you have the Missouri Tigers. Now, Missouri is being led by second-year head coach Eli Drinkwiz, I believe. And Missouri does have some strengths. And their main strength, I would say, is at the quarterback position and offense. They did have a freshman quarterback in Connor Bezalak, who had a promising freshman season, and they do have a lot of returning starters on offense, and have their average yards per play um, was 5.6 last year in SEC-only conference, which is really, I'd say, something to be proud about. The reason I don't have them higher than this, though, is because I think it's a second year, and I don't think that it'll they'll be able to rebuild like basically quickly enough to immediately jump into SEC championship consideration which would be third through first place in my opinion but Missouri will be a solid team nonetheless and I think that they'll beat Central Michigan have a close loss to Kentucky but they will then go on a four game winning streak against Southeast Missouri a serious Boston College team Tennessee and North Texas to be five and one in their first six games, but then they will alternate wins and losses as they have Texas A and M, Vanderbilt, Georgia, South Carolina, Florida, and Arkansas next up on their schedule. And I think A and M, Georgia, and Florida will be losses. Vanderbilt, South Carolina, and Arkansas will be wins. Missouri can't really get much higher than this. I think they could maybe win one more game, likely against Kentucky, maybe surprise the team on their home field, but I think Georgia's next to a guaranteed loss, and just seeing how good Florida will be, how solid Kentucky normally is, and how good I think A&M will be next year, especially their defense, I think Missouri will finish 8-4 and four with a 50% winning record in conference to finish fourth in the SEC East division their floor i'd say is six and six which which would be about where they were last year adjusted they finished five and five and their ceiling is again nine and three again like tennessee look out for the offense next year but their run game may not be the best as their running back has departed and they do need to have some improvements on defense as well Next up, you do have the Kentucky Wildcats, and I have Kentucky in third place because I look at how Kentucky has constantly had top passing defenses and how Mark Stoops has really built up his team to be solid and how they beat a solid NC State team in their bowl game despite having a 4-6 and six record last year. Um, I just think they're primed for, another good, for a good year a good year under Mark Stoops, like a, a year that they will be ranked at the end of the regular season. I think that they'll open up on a four-game win streak against um, Louisiana Monroe, Missouri, Chattanooga, and South Carolina. But that Florida game through that Florida through Georgia stretch, I think will be a loss. LSU's too talented, even though I don't think they will be too good. I think LSU will get a win just because, in a certain sense, this is just kind of like a, an upset prediction of mine. Florida is just the better team, hands down. Florida has more talent on the defensive side of the ball, and they also return a great amount of defensive starters. I think Emory Jones is a competent quarterback, especially since he can run the ball, and he did prove himself against a solid Oklahoma defense in the bowl game, so I look for him to be a good quarterback as well. And then Georgia is just, we all know how loaded Georgia is next year. So that's why I have Kentucky losing these three games specifically. At Mississippi State could be a challenge coming off a three-game losing streak, but I think that will be a win. And Kentucky will win out from there against Tennessee, Vanderbilt, New Mexico State, and Louisville, their main rival, to finish 9-3 and and 5-3 and in the SEC East and third overall. Their ceiling, I think, honestly, is 9-3. and three. And I look at that LSU game and seeing how I don't have LSU getting even 10 wins in the regular season, let alone 9 wins. I'm going to save my predictions for another video on the SEC West, by the way. So 
make sure to click the notification bell so you can get notified when that video comes out. But back to that LSU team again, um, despite the fact that I do think Kentucky could win that game, I just don't think Kentucky is a, just, they're not a talented enough team and they're not, I just don't see a lot of boom potential in this team, really. They did lose a defensive coordinator. They lost, like, Steve Klink scale, losing him is big time. And their offense was also, like, pretty atrocious last year. So despite the fact that I do think they are going to hugely improve, I think having 10 wins for Kentucky in the regular season is next to pushing it. So I have them maxing themselves out next year and achieving their 9 and 3 ceiling. They could fall to 6 and 6, which would actually be an improvement from last year, but I think looking at games like Missouri, Mississippi State, even Tennessee and Louisville, those games could turn the other way in a way that does not benefit Kentucky at all. Love the defense on Kentucky even with Clink Scales departure. Love Mark Stoops and mainly the passing defense in the corners. What I don't like is how the offense functioned last year. Just really don't like that. And then we are finally getting to the true contenders. These teams could be considered by some to be neck and neck, though most would consider one to be far ahead of the other. Number two in the SEC East, we have the Florida Gators. Now, Florida and Georgia here are the teams that beyond I have looked at the most because right from the bat, from last season to this season, who's all returning, I do think that these two are by far, it's, it's these two in a close race, Georgia being a decent amount ahead, but then every other one of these teams, in my opinion, is far below Florida and Georgia. What I like about Florida is Emory Jones and how Dan Mullen has truly figured out the offensive situation at Florida. They've consistently had minimum good offenses. Last year had an elite offense, Um, and I just love Dan Mullen as a coach. I think he is the best X's and O coach in the East Division. Not the best recruiter, though, and that's where my concern comes in. The slight talent gap behind Georgia, along with a defense that allowed, I believe, around 30 points a game. One of the worst scoring defenses in the nation, in fact. But Florida opens up against FAU and travels to USF, which I think will be blowout wins for the Gators, before hosting the Alabama Crimson Tide. Now, I do want to talk about Alabama a little bit in the sense that I do believe that Florida does have a chance here to win. And that is because Alabama is going to be a younger team. And again, Dan Mullen is a good, is a great, actually, X's and O head coach. So it's possible, but I think Alabama will get the win here at the end of the day. Again, Alabama has, they're on top of the world right now, and I think they're going to repeat. So let's just leave it at that. But Florida will then win against Tennessee, Kentucky, Vanderbilt, and they will travel to face LSU, and I think that will be hard just because it's a rivalry game that both sides take very seriously, but I think Florida will pull it out this time before losing in a closer-than-anticipated matchup with the Georgia Bulldogs. I think Florida will surprise some people against Georgia in the way that they lose. They don't get blown out because everyone's expecting Georgia to be this great team, and they are, but I think People are sleeping on Florida a little bit this year, just to be, to, just to put my opinion out there. And after the Georgia loss, which will be very tough for Florida to deal with, I think they'll win out against South Carolina, Samford, Missouri, and Florida State, and then go and likely win their New Year Six Bowl. And finally, last but not least, before we get to Georgia, Florida is. They could drop a few games, and they could go 8-4, and four, but that's the lowest I could see them going, and I think that's, vi- that's next to unlikely. But their ceiling, which is just as unlikely, is 11-1, and one, which would require a win either against Georgia or Alabama, which I think are both easily top four teams. A win against either of those would be amazing, but again, that would be very challenging. In my opinion, especially the Alabama win. That will be 
that would be a challenge, and I just can't see them going 12-0, and having Georgia and Alabama on their schedule. And last, but certainly not least, we have the Georgia Bulldogs. And the Georgia Bulldogs, um, they return a lot of offensive production. They return, you got running back Samir White, you have JT Daniels. It, it It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy the offensive production they have returning. And I think that will bolster them to win an undefeated regular season in the SEC East. They will open up and shock many people facing Clemson at a neutral site, blowing out UAB, South Carolina, Vanderbilt, Arkansas, Auburn, and Kentucky. The Florida game, one of my bolder predictions is that that Florida matchup will probably be their toughest game. Maybe not with the scoreboard, because we all know that Clemson's very talented, especially especially with DJ Uyunglele. But Florida, that will be a very tough game. I think last year's Florida win has instilled confidence in Florida, kind of shaken up yet motivated Georgia at the same time. I think that Florida and Georgia game will be a game to watch. That game will be neck and neck at points. And there will be moments where either team can decisively flip the momentum and outcoach the other in such a fashion that that will secure victory. It will be a very great game. I think the Georgia-Florida game, bold prediction, will probably be unpopular. The Florida-Georgia game will be more intense and exciting and will determine perhaps even more than the Georgia-Clemson game will. And after that, Georgia will cruise on through Missouri, Tennessee, Charleston, and Georgia Tech to finish 12-0 and in the regular season. They could lay a few eggs and go 10-2. I think that'd be the absolute worst-case scenario. And they are, like Kentucky, they have achieved their ceiling at 12-0. and And that's just how I see it for the SEC East. That's all I have to say for this video here. Georgia will be representing the East Division in the SEC Championship game. Remember to like and subscribe if you liked this video, and comment your thoughts down below, and hit that notification bell so you can see my next video on the SEC West and the following video on the SEC Championship game. Those will come out in a few days. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you around.